now Floyd Mayweather. Will the welterweight champ retain his title? I approach it like it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, I feel like your life is already planned out. And at 36, how much longer can he fight? I asked the same question about you. Why haven't you walked away yet? I can't explain it. Plus, will a fight with Manny Pacquiao ever happen? That's all ahead on Larry King Now. King, now we are at Floyd Mayweather's boxing club in Las Vegas. It's a little warm in here. And my guest is the undefeated eight-time five-division world champion and the current WBC welterweight champion, Floyd Mayweather. We spent some time with him back at CNN. Good to be with us. It's good to have him with us here in Vegas. On May 4th, Floyd will fight Robert the Ghost Guerrero at the MGM Grand in Vegas on Showtime. What is this deal with Showtime? Um, well, it's uh, an exclusive deal. It's not just the biggest deal in boxing. It's the biggest deal in sports. Um, it's a deal that consists of six fights. And, um, you know, I got to have a, a brilliant team outside the ring. And we came together. We had a game plan. And we put a, an exclusive deal together. Six fights in how long a period of time? Uh, 30 months. Six fights in 30 months. And it's like every five uh, months, four months? We're gonna try to stay at you know, we're gonna try to stay active as much as possible. But I would say two fights a year, basically. What would happen, Floyd, if God forbid you were defeated in one of those six fights? Uh we don't know. You know, as of right now, our main focus is winning. You know, uh, I was born a winner. So my main focus is just winning. You know, I, I try to stay focused on positive things. Now, how about Guerrero? How many times did Guerrero lose? Uh, I think he lost one. He had one draw. I think he has somewhere around 30 to 31 victories with like 18 KOs. So he's a, he's a solid opponent, and he's, 20, and he's 29 years old. Do you watch films of him? No, I actually had a chance to watch Robert fight one time, and um, he's solid. When you think about an opponent, is it an opponent? Is there strategy? I think a fighter should, I think a fighter have to adjust to me. I think a fighter have to adjust to me because I control the tempo at all times. I've been there so many times. I know what it takes. And um, the game plan is just to, you know, take my time, take my time and listen to whatever, whatever the game plan is. Muhammad Ali once told me in a fit of candor that he definitely had fear in the ring because the guy wanted to hurt him. <laughs> Do you ever have fear? No. Never? Never. How do you explain that? I just, I, my approach is like um, a lot of people heard me say before. I approach it like it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, I feel like your life is already planned out. So you don't? I don't really, I don't really worry about, you know, being hurt. Yeah, you know, it comes with the territory. Forbes magazine reported that you are the world's highest paid athlete, earning last year $85 million. Are <laughs> they correct? <laughs> um, it could be a little, it could, it could be a little bit more than that. More a than bit that. more than that? Yes. <laughs> what is it like? You didn't grow up rich, did you? Um, I had the best of both worlds. You did? Yes. Um, well, you know, um, I stayed with my mother at one particular time um, in, Jer in New Brunswick, New Jersey. We, s we, we lived seven deep in a one-bedroom apartment, no hot water. You call that the best of both worlds? Uh, you didn't let me finish. Okay. You have to let me finish. But uh, also, at one particular time, I stayed with my dad as a kid. And my dad, of course, you know, he hustled, you know, in the, in the inner city of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, he makes sure I... You know, I had to find her, find her things in life when I was young also. So I say the best of both worlds. I understand. How does it feel, though, to have everything? That you can have, you can go to any store and buy anything. How's that well, feel like? Well, what I come to find out, it's not always about, you know, the money. You know, of course, I'm Floyd Money Mayweather, and 
Of course, a lot, of course, who don't like to make a lot of money or who don't like to find her things in life? But if you can have all the money in the world, but if, you're, if you don't have no freedom, then it's just like you being broke. So I come to find out that my freedom is more important than anything. And you had your freedom taken away for a couple yes, of months. Yes, so that's, that's what I learned. Yeah. My, freedom, my freedom is very important. Because when I was locked up, I couldn't do nothing. How do you explain all that? How did that happen in your life? Well, things happen. You know, uh, you know, I had three children with a, a young lady. We wasn't seeing eye to eye, you know? We wasn't seeing eye to eye. You know, she was a little upset, had a little alcohol in her system. She was a little edgy, and I told her, you know, basically I needed the keys to my truck. She was upset. She didn't want me to take the keys to the truck. So things out got, got, got out of hand and blown out of, you know, they, blown thing, they, they blow things up bigger than what things are really made, made out to be. So things happen. But nevertheless, you had to do two months, right? Yeah, I did two months for misdemeanor, yes. So what is it like to have everything and then not have freedom? That's what I come to find out. Freedom is very important. Freedom is very, very important. And I'm just, you know, I'm happy to be free. I'm happy to be back, you know, in my children's life. Um, I met your little daughter. She's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, that's my baby. That's my sweetheart. And <laughs> she's funny. Yeah. <laughs> she's very, very smart, a lot of personality. So the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> no, it don't. <laughs> you said the best night of your life is when you were released from prison. And you, in Showtime's 30 Days in May, you documented the time leading up to your sentence, ended with the release. Why did you let him do all that? Um, the because, plowing the cameras. You in. know, because I've done shows in the past to where... The only thing they want to show is just about me being flashy, about me being flamboyant, about the money. And, you know, I'm a person that, lo that loves his family and loves his friends. And so I wanted to show a different part of my life. I wanted to show a different part of my life. And, and I always want the fans to, you know, because the fans help, help you get to where you're at. So I want the fans to be a part of my life. And I wanted, to do a, I wanted to do a documentary right after, you know, the night of my fight with Cotto, leading up t until I went, until I got incarcerated. Was it tough to come back in the ring? Um, I had to make some adjustments. I had to make some adjustments because my body, you know, made a change when I was locked up. I was doing 1,300 push-ups a day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I had to make an adjustment. You know, when, I got, when I first got back to the boxing gym, I wasn't performing like... I wanted to perform, so I was saying to myself, you know, something is not going right. So I was extremely rough on myself. I got a couple bumps, a couple bruises that I normally don't get. But you know, now everything is falling in place. I'm comfortable, I'm happy, and I'm ready to go out there and perform and do what I do best. Was Cotto one of your toughest fights? Cotto, he was solid. Very, very strong competitor. Very, very strong competitor. He's the guy that I knew I couldn't overlook. Yeah. Actually, he was tougher than I thought he was, so. Like I said before, with this fight, I'm pushing myself a lot harder, and so I can go out there and, and be at my best. It's always it's, it's always about going out there, being at your best, and just giving the fans what they want to see. Have you been hurt in the ring? Oh, absolutely, I've been hurt before. You know, with a big shot. Um, Shane Mosley hit me with a good shot. Miguel Cotto hit me with a good shot. But I understand. You know, uh, this comes with the territory. When you can you can you cannot be in 40, yeah. you cannot be in 43 shootouts and not get shot. <laughs> <laughs> this fascinates me about boxers. When when you get hit and you set a good shot, does it hurt hurt? I mean is is there pain involved? How would you describe that? Well, I mean well when you get hit I think certain fighters when you're not in tip-top condition or tip-top shape when you get hit with a, a big shot. It's hard to bounce back from. But when you, when you prepare yourself for anything, when you get hit with a shot, you can bounce back. So, but when they hit you, you're surprised. Oh, right? it, it hurts. <laughs> it does hurt. It hurts, but, you know, you got to say to yourself, you know, uh, I want, I'm, I'm here to be the best. You're, you're 36. You're 43 and 0. Do you ever think about walking away? I mean, what yes, else, what's left much. to attain? 
What? I asked the same question about you. Why haven't you walked away yet? I can't explain it, because I love it. And I, and I can't walk away neither. I love it. Yeah, I guess I it's love the... it. So I guess we both love what we do. What do you think about... Your... But the difference in athletics mm -hmm. is that athletes, their best of them is done when they're 40, let's say, right? Pitchers, boxers... Well, I don't really want to say... I'm a, I think I'm a, I'm a different breed, I would like to say, because there's no athlete out there right now uh, you know, not being disrespectful to no athlete, because I take my hat off to anyone, you know, that went out there and dedica dedicated, they self dedicated themselves to their craft, Correct. but that's been at the top for 17 years. Correct. Without a loss. But there is a day when the cheering stops, right? The athlete hangs it up. You're not going to be boxing when you're 50. Absolutely. Do you think about that? Do you think about not doing what you I want to hand the torch to the young and up, the up and coming young fighters that's under my Mayweather banner. Oh, you have fighters under your banner? Yes, absolutely. You know, our company, Mayweather Promotions, is, is growing and it's growing very, very fast. They call us the money team. And of course, you can, we got nice gear at themoneyteam.com. But um, like I said before, I want my legacy to live on when I'm long gone from the sport. Are you gonna be a businessman? I'm a businessman now. So the Mayweather Promotions is a group of people. You do other things. Well, who you think promotes the fights? I promote my own you fights. Promote your own fight. Yeah, so that's why I'm a little different from any other fighter. There's no Don King in your life. No, it's no Don King in my life. No Bob Arum. In my, no Bob Arum. No Don King. He cuts his own swath. He's a special guy. He's Floyd Mayweather, and we're at his gym. This is your gym, right? It's my gym. You don't work at someone else's gym. <laughs> I interviewed the WWE superstar, The Big Show. You remember him? And he said the closest time he ever came to hurting someone in the ring was when you broke his nose. Now, you were on our show before that fight, <laughs> but he wanted to hurt you. How did it feel to fight a guy, what was he, seven feet? Well, at first, what's, what's so crazy, I, when I was a kid, I used to love to watch the WWF, because at that particular time, when I was a Federation. kid, it was the, it was the WWF, World Wrestling Federation. So now it's the WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment. Now what's crazy is, when I used to watch wrestling with my grandmother as a kid, uh, my dad used my dad used to always say, "Cut that off. Wrestling wrestling is fake." So when I got involved with the WWE, um, it was like. You and Big Show are gonna have a, a matchup. I said, what you mean? He said, y'all can fight. I said, what do you mean fight? Is it for fake? They said, no. You swing, y'all fight for real? I'm like, I thought wrestling was fake. So when I punched him in the face, you know, I broke his nose. And I was like, oh man. So right after I broke his nose, then they said, you know what? Y'all gonna fight in WrestleMania so you guys can go ahead and film a commercial tonight. So I broke his nose earlier that night. Then later on that night, we had to film a commercial Force. while his nose was bleeding. So I was like, I know this guy want to kill me right now. Did he try to kill you? Well, he tried to kill me in WrestleMania, <laughs> of course. But did you, did you have fun? Great experience. The McMahon family is truly unbelievable. Great family. Um, first class service. First class service. Great people. I love the WWE. I'll get back to that. We're gonna, in a little while, we'll have social media questions for you and everything. But no first, problem. How do you prepare, like how much training do you do for a fight? Um, three workouts every day. I come from the boxing gym mainly from 3 to 6.30, 3 to 7. You know, um... You run in the mornings? No, I run at night. I run at night. Go for a long run at night. Then go to the fitness gym. Then you got to sit in a hot tub. Then you got to get a massage every day for nine weeks. Do you stay at a... Now, you've, you've won in different divisions, right? Yes. You're going to go up again to another division? Well, um, I'm world champion right now at two weight classes. Actually, I'm the WBA uh, junior middleweight champion, which is 154. And I'm also the, the waterweight champion at 147. And this is the title I will be defending, you know, come May 4th. 
safe to say you're the most famous boxer in the world today. Yes. Do you think, and some people think this, that when you do hang it up, boxing's going to be in trouble? Um, don't the, have a name. The sport of boxing will live on because I'll, I will still be involved with the sport. And the Mayweather brand is here to live on. We're going to go strong. So when one of your fighters comes along, you'll be out doing interviews about that fighter? Oh, uh, absolutely. This is not our last interview. You're going to be working the corner? <laughs> uh, I worked the corner. Actually, I worked the corner not too long ago. So I do, I'll do a little bit. Of, I do a little bit of it all. I train, I promote. I do it all, and I fight. The incredible <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, the undefeated Floyd Mayweather. He fights Saturday night, May 4th, here in Las Vegas. As an amateur, you were 84 and 6. <laughs> Who beat you? Well, actually, you know, amateur boxing ha has changed. You know, I fought in the 96 Olympic Games. I received the bronze medal because you only can win a gold. So I received the bronze medal in the, in the 96 Olympics. And um, I lost to, uh, I believe, two, um, three, probably three Americans. You know, you lost, I lost on the computer scoring system. Yeah. You know, at, at one particular time in amateur boxing, the scoring system, you know, wasn't wasn't too friendly. Based on punches or actually, I lost all six fights by one point. Really? Yes, and I redeemed probably two of those losses. So you're never knocked out? No. All right, we have some social media questions for you. Estevan C530 asks if you could fight any fighter, living or dead, who would you like to fight? Um, what fighter in history would you like to afford? Alexis Aguel. Who? Alexis Ag Aguel. Don't know him. He's, he's unbelievable. Unbelievable fighter. Just in case 1004 wants to know, how did you do in school growing up? Um, I was a class clown. I was a class clown. <laughs> um, did you, you know, play other sports? Um... Love basketball, play football. Uh, they like to call it Pop Warner. We like to call it Rocket Football when you're a kid. Pop Warner. I played Pop Warner football as a kid. Um, played were you, basketball. Were you good? I was good. If I wanted to play basketball, I could have played. If I wanted you to like, play football, I could have played. You watch the NBA? Love the NBA. Who's going to win it all? It's a few teams. Not the Miami Heat automatic? No, mm -hmm. not Miami Heat automatic. You can never overlook the Spurs. You, you can never look. You can never overlook Kevin Durant, OKC, Westbrook. Pretty good. <laughs> hey, tough. OK, we play a little game called If You Only Knew. Most memorable match? Genero Hernandez. Will a fight with Manny Pacquiao ever happen? Manny Pacquiao still asleep. He got to wake up. <laughs> Your boxing heroes. My uncle Roger, my father, and my uncle Jeff Mayweather. Biggest regret? Now that's a great pause. You don't have a regret? So many of them. Oh, so many. So many. I accept that. What would people be surprised to find out about you? I don't like five-star restaurants. Really? No. You like, like, I like steak and eggs and... Yes. I like real food. <laughs> you don't like the fancy service. I mean, I don't mind go taking people out to fancy restaurants, because, of course, people like to go to nice restaurants, but the food is horrible. <laughs> Favorite meal before a fight? Steak, potato, and pasta. Biggest thing you've ever splurged on? Big Boy Mansion. Spend most money ever on that? Yes, on my, on my home. Where is it? Las Vegas. Big, most influential person in your life? Al Heyman. Who? Al Heyman. Favorite music to listen to? Stevie Wonder. Favorite city you've ever visited? Las Vegas, Nevada. I think the next answer is best boxing city. Las Vegas. And finally, if you weren't a boxer, what would you be? 
a boxing promoter. <laughs> You're the best man. <laughs> Money man Floyd Mayweather. You can watch him on Saturday, May 4th. He defends his title against Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Mayweather versus Guerrero, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on Showtime pay-per-view. And remember, you can find me on King's Things on Twitter.